All right, guys, today we're going to be doing some technical analysis for the SPY Qs, Apple, Tesla, Amazon, NVIDIA, AMD, and Meta going forward, looking at GME and AMC as well. Now, I just wanted to point out I'm very, very busy tonight, so I'm going to be putting out the daily expected moves uh, when I'm live tomorrow morning. I just, this is the only moment I have to do it, and I have to wait for that data, so I'm trying to give you an update video. So I first just wanted to jump into the SPY. First of all, we know that this stuff is rigged at this point. Um, we've seen flashes and stuff. We're going to show you a rigged move from NVIDIA and things like that, some weird weird chart behavior. Okay, so right now, what we've mainly been talking about is how these daily expected moves are very small. The volume is absolute crap here, while all the volume is in GME and AMC. A ton, a ton of volume in AMC and GME, uh, but they don't go up, they don't move. It's being forced down, and, and you're just noticing that the market makers, they don't have the liquidity to do both at the same time. They're using all their liquidity to hold them down at this point. So trading the shorter time frames is going to be very difficult. I mean, look at this behavior here. It looks like we should turn down at any moment and we just can't because uh, they want to hold it up higher. They want to hold it up higher, keep milking money out of retail traders. I have suggested on my Patreon to just look at higher time frames. So today we're going to look at a two hour and we're going to notice what? Well, a two hour divergence could come early on tomorrow. So we're going we're to pay attention to those daily expected moves. I assume they will be small as well because the volume is going to be low. Volume is going to be low, so it's going to be absolute crap. What do we notice that this divergence here did actually confirm, but we can head higher. Don't think that we can't head higher. If we keep crossing up on hourlies and two hours, we can head higher. Um, there just won't be much volume, and it's going to be most likely retail just holding the bag over and over and over again. So still all the way to the upside here we want to pay attention to uh, 542.61 to the upside right we want to pay attention to that upside move real quick let's flash over to xlu this one looked like it was going to cross up on that two hour reject looks like it's going to cross up but you're seeing flagging here the highest i think we do go is that 71 uh, 72 i think that the spy is going to catch up to this the spy being up here xlu is down here it's just right now they're doing that battle so they can't rig it down right now they just can't do it so they're just going to rip it back and forth they're going to rip things back and forth try to take as much of your money as possible to keep fighting amc and gme or maybe amc and gme pop off and they have to liquidate those assets one of those being nvidia let's look at the cues real quick now this was an interesting move we set up some points here and i'm going to look at this on an hourly because it looks pretty clear the divergence is there but i just want to mention this thing all of these things are squeezing to the upside the behavior on the shorter time frames is just is just random at this point and it's going to keep fighting against you if more people keep putting those puts in okay if they keep putting they do not want the market to fall here and then amc and gme start to rip right they do not want that look it's going to make them look awful so the main signal to pay attention to on the cues and the spy is what if you just waited until the daily actually confirms divergence i think that that's the likely thing that would be the smartest thing to do at this point because really they should be down here by xlu and they're, they're just not doing that so you need to pay attention to it because this is just a hundred percent rigged moves right here and it's very very easy to see and so let's go look at apple remember we were talking about a rigged move look at that thing that's just ridiculous okay and now what do we see we see all the headlines right if we go into the shorter time frames here we're outside of the weekly expected move we can keep going but we notice that every single stock is red and what do they do well they pump up apple so that um, the market can remain healthy there and that's just that's just kind of ridiculous at this point at this point it's just hard to um even talk well about these stocks that we're seeing, the charts that we're seeing, it's very hard to do that. So at this point, what am I thinking is going to happen here? Well, I don't know, we're outside of that weekly range, we could just keep squeezing, because they can keep squeezing this and just taking money away from people as they keep trying to short. So we're paying attention to a lot here. Um, and what do we notice here in the shorter time frame? Well, we see downward on the queue, on the uh, 15 minute for Apple, but it's just it's just this is rigged so what do i want to pay attention to i want to pay attention to a daily look at that daily that daily macd i'm just going to revert or i'm just going to get out of get this line off the screen that's when uh kramer told you to buy it was up here at 206 dollars so um this here you do have a slight divergence it's kind of up actually on the rsi here just a little bit up so you can't really read into this too much you just need to know that this is a very very rigged move this is one of the biggest stocks in the stock market so of course they're going to use something like apple to hold the market up I'd still be very afraid as that dollar is creeping up. We'll point that out in a little bit. Now, Tesla trying to roll negative here on the daily scale. Very, very big for Tesla. Now, if we go into a shorter time frame for Tesla, we can read into it a little bit, right? Because the 30 minute is going a little bit lower and it made a decision, which is finally a good thing. But I wanted to talk about this possible, you know, people are saying head and shoulders, but really this is just a big range. And the point of the range that you broke out of was this little box right here. So, 
it's very likely that Tesla actually reacts up and then you wanna see what the reaction is from here. Does it just recover through it or does it get rejected? If it recovers through it, you might see more positivity. But really, I'm just seeing if that center line, if we get up towards it, curl back down. If we get up towards it, curl back down. I think that that, that would be a sign for further downside for Tesla. It's not even at its weekly expected move yet. Amazon, what do we want to pay attention to here? Well, it's trying to curl up on that 30 minute. Like I said, the rigged game can continue. So maybe it is an opportunity to just look at the bigger time frames and notice that the two hour just wasn't crossing. Once the two hour crosses, then you can maybe see some negativity if they want to allow it. That's the whole thing. That's why I'm like, if you just went away for a little bit, well, go away in May. Like what? Go, go. What is it? Sell in May and go away. Probably a good choice at this point because this shit is just wild. This is just like terrible market behavior. Um, and what are we noticing here? Well, on the daily scale, we are going positive. So you can still see that rigged behavior. Look out for a triple divergence above you and then look for that to confirm. That's what I would say is the best thing to do in this scenario is to look at a daily chart and wait for some kind of setup on the daily chart to play out for you. NVIDIA, this on the daily, what do you see here? Oh, a glitch in the system. Wow, something hitting the tape here on the daily, but notice this, it does not pop up on these shorter time frames. So they're gonna call it a glitch, they're gonna call it whatever, but um, I don't know what this means for NVIDIA, but usually when you see things like this start to pop up on your chart, you know that something isn't right here. Something is definitely not right here, and I wanted to bring it to your attention. Something isn't right here. It could mean that, that NVIDIA is actually trading at different levels in dark pools at this level. We see this kind of thing with GME, AMC, and NVIDIA, and so the fact that you see it with GME and AMC, and now NVIDIA, now it's kind of like, okay, we know that GME and AMC are rigged. This is kind of just your, your nail in the coffin. Okay, NVIDIA is definitely rigged. And we'll see what's going on with that. Maybe they just did this to take out everyone's stops. I don't know at this point, but it's just hard to trust NVIDIA at this point. I'd just be waiting for some kind of daily to cross over and pull back. And then maybe that crosses back up. Positive territory, right? So we're paying attention to the same things. I'm just encouraging you to do it on bigger time frames. Two hour I can still look into, but we're noticing this is overall just a two hour pullback and they will not let it fall. They just won't let it fall. So I'd be very, very cautious with NVIDIA. I'd be very, very cautious with pretty much every stock out there because you don't know the actual number that the stock is trading at in the dark, dark pools. You just know whatever number they're willing to give you today and we're getting extremely small volume. So if you have extremely small volume, you know that your trades pretty much don't hit the tape. If anything, they just use your information to uh, do the opposite of what you're, what you're going to do so what most retail does they're just going to do the opposite at this point this is just a completely rigged market i totally understand and this is why i am very heavily um able to hold my amc and gme positions because i'm just like hey i'm smiling because i know it's making them go nuts and i don't care if i even lose money in it i'm like i'm willing to let them go nuts for a while um until they want to just finally make this market drop because right now two hour you have divergence but they're just not allowing any weakness in this overall move i highly doubt that you know insiders are holding this at this point as that dollar is ripping to the upside amd this one down by its weekly expected move that's important to understand if you see that curl up it's not going to be good but amd is one that's kind of confusing because it did cross over on this macd yesterday and then you're seeing that continue today and then what are we noticing? We're below all the moving averages, but we're already outside of the weekly expected move. So I'm expecting a rigged move in the morning from AMD. Now, if they're going to actually let the market fall, the correct move for AMD to make here is drop into this zone. Uh, but as we're at that weekly expected move, I highly assume they're just trying to get retail to short here and they're just gonna rip it the other way. So be careful with the shorter time frames. Meta, this one just ripping higher and higher and higher, pretty sure going to its weekly expected move. And it's just, it's just, it's just everything. It's like sad. It's sad to think about stocks. I love, I love doing chart analysis so much and you just can't do anything here. You just can't. It's like, if I go look at a two hour or something like that, I'll probably see something forming and just be like, oh yeah, there's divergence on the RSI, but not the MACD. It doesn't matter at this point. It is just, do they want to push the stock up or do they want to push the stock down? And you just have to, at, in, in times like this, in times like this, I'm not taking any trades right now. I got out of my volatility, I have risk management, uh, I did my risk management, and now I'm just like, you know what, I'm just gonna hold AMC and GME until this stuff is over with because they are blatantly just rigging everything to hold the market up at this point. 
Um, so because insiders are selling, they're going to hope to push these stuff higher. They could just be having insiders selling it off dramatically and the market makers and stuff could just be holding all these numbers higher for however they want. They're just typing in a number at this point and saying the stock's worth that. In my opinion, it's just, it's an awful thing. And I love charts. I love doing this. I do. I love it. I'm just saying the environment we're in right now. It's just, it's not a good one to be trying to trade in. And I totally understand. I had someone live who just said, you know, a week, a week ago they came in, they were like, you know what? I, this stuff just looks totally rigged at this way. It looks so stupid to me that I'm not even going to trade it. And I really respect that. I think that's a smart thing to do. Now, these are stocks we can actually look into. AMC and GME, weirdly enough, these are stocks that actually make a little sense. It's weird across the board. I'm like, none of these stocks make sense on the shorter time frames. Weirdly enough, AMC and GME kind of makes sense, which is funny to me. Like momentum is playing out and things like that. So live, we were talking about this, um, the hourly, we were talking about the uh, overall smaller cup and handle to form and to get this to actually break to the upside. AMC actually could have that cup and handle if you take it right here at this level. And so once we started to hit that level on the hourly, we said the reason it would turn up here is if you get a five minute pullback, right? You get a five minute pullback like this. If that crosses up, you have a good likelihood to cross over that daily or that hourly MACD. And then that's right by positive territory. So we did all of this live and it happened. And then I got off for lunch and guess what? All of it happened right after I got off and boom, there you go. We get the hourly to cross up. So this tells you this, the hourly is positive. That is a very, very good thing. The hourly is in a positive trend. The two hour wanted to cross. It couldn't do it by the end of the day. Okay. The two hour crossing would be a huge signal, but I'm going to give you a hint right now. I've already looked back at AMC and the big signal that this was or wasn't the moment is the 30 minute chart. If the 30 minute chart crosses down, you probably know that's not the moment. It's very close to negative territory. You can see that actually push down. I'm just grateful to actually be able to do some analysis on a chart on a shorter time frame. Everything else is almost impossible to do and I'm trying to do it live and it's just like, hey, if the if the 15 minute curls down, it's right by the center. Oh, it curled back up on the next bar and then it's like, oh, it curled down on the next bar. Oh, it, it went down into negative. Here we go. Oh, no, now it's wicking. It's just, it's almost impossible, but AMC and GME, you can actually do it. Now, one key thing with AMC was it tried to cross up on the daily scale. This might be all the pullback we get. If we get another upward move, we're going to cross and we'll have daily momentum with us. GME, this one is rejecting the cross on the MACD right now. So daily momentum is still with you for GME. And the cool part about GME, the, the hourly did cross up a little bit later. The way I've explained this is, I think they're having a hard time suppressing AMC and GME at the same time. So you're seeing like AM, uh, GME is getting suppressed here and then AMC sees a run and then they go, oh crap, we have to suppress this and then GME starts to run. So if we look at this timestamp of about 1230, right, once they started to get these wicks, we can go over and look at GME and see, oh, well, uh, right around 1230 is when we got that breakout. So I think they're having a hard time keeping both down at the same time. But I just wanna say, this is a good sign. This is a bullish contrarian signal. You are still negative for GameStop. So AMC does look a little bit, bit better on the, on the hourly scale. GME just needs to do a little bit more work, but it is great to close above 3049. If you really want to see some kind of gamma squeeze that leads to a short squeeze, you got to get above 4117. That would be a huge level. And then after that, 4757 for GME. But this is overall, hopefully you enjoyed the breakdown for GME because I'm just thankful I could actually do some kind of analysis on it. The last part would be if we're going to head down, the 30 minutes going to cross. And why would that be a bad thing? Well, you're, you're still in negative territory. You're just starting to creep into positive. We're seeing a move up in the post market. But if that would curl down, that would mean we go lower most likely, right? We test the low, we go make a new one. So just be cautious going forward. It's great news to see that Ryan Cohen um, won his lawsuit. That is a great, great thing for the stock. Now, real quick, just to show you guys why the stock market could just tear down at any moment. The daily has crossed up. The daily has crossed up on its MACD and you're seeing huge rips while the stock market goes higher. We pointed this out one or two weeks ago. We were saying we're looking for a moment down here where the stock market goes up and the dollar goes up at the same time. You still have that even to right now. And it has crossed up and it looks like it wants to go positive. Literally, it's like any day now, this could actually get the correct um, correlation and we could actually see the spy just drop off dramatically because the insiders are selling huge amounts here for some reason. So be very, very cautious. I know we get data tomorrow. 
We're seeing those yields start to drop off. So we'll pay attention to the data in the morning and we may go live and watch Jerome Powell. I believe he talks in the afternoon, but um, yields overall, I, I'm just saying this looked like a flight to safety. Now we got the retest and that thing's starting to rebound. We didn't cross over on the daily chart. So the two hour here, if that crosses up positive territory, another positive move, this might be very dependent on the data. But we know that when yields start to drop off dramatically, a lot of the time we end up getting the crash when the yields are going down. So let's pay attention to that. All right, guys. I mean, that's all I got for you today. I think the main takeaway here is start to look at the bigger time frames because the shorter ones are just trap after trap after trap. During my live video, I'm going to try dramatically hard to not look at the shorter time frames because that is just going to trick you. Uh, I'm not someone who does zero DTE. I'm a position trader. And if you need that course, by the way, it's only $100 right now down in the description. It's all of June, but get it as soon as possible. This is a great time because the shorter time frames look so terrible. You probably would have a day or two to still take that course, learn all this stuff, and then be able to use it for the bigger time frames. I think it would be very, very helpful. You'll learn a lot. Lot, a lot of stuff exactly how I trade is what I teach you in the course and I teach you risk management too if you're still trading the shorter time frames and you know you got ruined by Apple or something like that um, we teach you how to get in and out of a losing trade it's very very good so thank you guys so much for watching I really do appreciate it. I'm sorry I had to do it very quickly today I'm just a little low on time but I do really appreciate it grab that course thank you for joining the patreon thank you for liking thank you for subscribing you guys are fantastic and I will see you live tomorrow morning all right Peace.